Hey everyone, Gary here from Echidna Sewing and uh, today in this video we're going to show you how to assemble the uh, an industrial sewing machine stand and in particular for this particular video we're going to be assembling a VMA VA2S um, high speed straight stitch underbed thread trimming machine as you can see right there in front of you. Now um, this particular video is while it's covering a specific model it's really very similar to so many different makes and models on the market because the the, the principles are roughly the same, so you should find it quite helpful. But before I do, we're going to take a look at what tools I think you should have at hand to do this job. Starting a project like this with the right tools is always a good idea. Now, while not everything here is essential, if you've got them at hand, I tell you what, it's gonna make it a whole lot easier. First thing is, I would definitely have a drill with a number two Phillips bit in that. Um, little hammer, you'll see why a little later. A measuring tape, a good measuring ruler, I always find handy for doing anything like this. A, a magnetized spirit level, um, that will be really, really helpful. Six inch shifter and a 8, 10, 14 and 19 mil ring spanner, open end and ring spanner. If you've got those, that'd be really awesome. A little tube of grease or some grease. Um, don't need a lot of it, but the, it does make some little aspects of assembling this a bit easier. And um, I love these little super lube oil pens. Always have one of them. There's a couple of bits we like to use that on. A 19 mil, I think it's a 19 mil. I'm sure it is. Yes, a 19 mil. Uh, no, sorry, 14 mil um, socket driver and a pair of scissors, workshop scissors that you that you don't mind what you're gonna cut with them because they're just handy. And, um, and that's about it. I can do this whole job with this toolkit here, um, but uh, you don't need everything, but definitely would be handy to have this as a starting point. So let's get into it. All right, so the machine would have been uh, supplied to you as a the bench and table. And of course, uh, the machine is in the box underneath that. Now, these guys are heavy, so if you if you feel like you need it, I, I do recommend having a second person to help you do the lifting and, uh, and moving things around. And definitely when we're actually putting the machine into the stand, you need a second person. Assembling the stand, yeah, not so big a deal. But the thing I like to do is I do like to work at bench height. So I do recommend if you've got an old table or you know, fold up table, anything that's you know a little, little bit sturdy, um, use that to work on rather than working on the floor. A bit back breaking and old bloke like me, it's much easier to work at this height. So we're going to first of all um, open up the, um, the table and the stand and got my trusty old heavy duty scissors, which are great and they cut anything. So we're just going to cut the, um, the strapping there, move that away. And I'm going to just pull this back a little bit. There we go, get rid of that bit of cardboard over here, it's gone. And now you can see we've got all our, our bench components there. So I'll just talk about what these are, take them out one by one. and. Again, I'm doing this so as you can actually see it on the camera. Um, perhaps you might have this laid out on the floor, which is a, a little bit easier, but um, we're trying to, to make it as simple as we can here. This is the, uh, the foot pedal for the machine. So we're just gonna pop that there for a minute. We now have the, um, this is the bar that sits, that mounts the foot pedal at the bottom of the actual stand. This is the back brace for the stand. Let's move those scissors out of the way. They also have a drawer and uh, the, the slides for the drawer and all the screws you need for assembly will be in that drawer. And then you have the two legs and the legs have an adjustable component in there. So we've got our, that's our left leg, depending on which way you're looking at the table. Doesn't matter, you'll see when we put it together. And of course we have the other side of the leg. Now sometimes these can be a little bit tight, which happens through shipping, so just You'll see that actually does move eventually. There we go, got it out. So they can be a little tight, but you're having a, a little tap with a hammer would actually get that out quite easily. Now underneath the, uh, the components, you will find this, plastic, this uh, paper uh, cardboard separator. I'm gonna use that in a minute. And now we have the machine bench, which uh, looks lovely there with the cutout for the machine. So what I'm gonna do is gonna move all these bits and pieces out the way 
and I'm going to lay this piece of plastic down, or piece of plastic, piece of cardboard, down on the bench and use that just to protect my tabletop when I'm actually uh, working on it. So let me get rid of all this and uh, we'll set it up. Okay, so moved everything out the way now. We've got the flat table in place, bit of cardboard on there. It just protects the top of the, t the bench top so you don't, you're not going to mark it or scratch it. And now all we need to do is pull this out. Now these guys are pretty heavy. So again, you may need a second person to lift. I don't know, I'm not sure how strong you are, but um, there we go. So this is the, uh, the bench top. This uh, uh, side is the front of the bench. So you'd be sitting and looking at the machine from that side. You need to identify the front of the bench because when we turn it upside down, you need to know which way you're working. So now that I've got those little end caps off. I can turn this around and I have the front of the bench pointing to me and we'll do that. So I'm standing at the front of the bench, so you need to know that. So this will be when you're sitting at the machine, this will be the back right corner. Remember we've got it upside down at the moment, so it may look a bit weird how I'm, what, I'm, what I'm saying there, but trust me, the front of the bench is here back right corner when you're sitting at the machine will be where this hole is. And that hole is for the thread stand, which will actually go down through there from the top. Now we need to set the legs in place first. And if we take a look at this, we've got a left and right leg. Again, this is the front of the bench on my side. And we want to set these legs so as basically this cavity is on the inside, which is facing the machine there. So this one is of course for that side there and this guy will go and sit basically here like that. Now um, I'm going to give you some measurements that will uh, allow us to easily position this. What I tend to do, like to do, is I like to take this out first, put that there and position this leg in place. Now I happen to know through just putting heaps and heaps of these together, that the distance from this edge to the edge of the bench, I always have at six centimeters. So I basically just measure that to six centimeters and nine centimeters in. So nine centimeters to there, six centimeters from there. And essentially that is a measurement that I know works. And what I will, when I put that and screw that in, I'll show you another little setting that you can use to get that in the right position. At this point, we do need to open all the little box of tricks, screws and everything that are in here. And we can get rid of that. And now open this one. And I usually just pour everything into that little drawer, which is great. And this is where we will start with our drill. Now, a little tip, uh, you are drilling into plywood and sometimes it, it can be a little bit tough to get the screws in. And you'll notice that there are going to be at least four of these quite large self-tapping hex head timber screws there. We need four of those. And what I tend to do so I just take a little bit of grease and I just put a smidgen on the screw. And what that will do is it'll just make the screw go in way, way easier. And all we're gonna do, oh, let me set my, my tensions are okay on the screw. Now remember, I've already set this, but there's an old rule, whenever you're doing anything, measure twice, cut once, or measure twice, drill once. I'm just gonna double check, 60 mil or six centimeters there, and I have 90 millimeters there. That's my first point that I'm going to put in. Take my drill and we'll just position that nice and centre. Need a bit more torque on my screwdriver. If it's a bit tough, just take it out again. A bit more torque. And that's it, that's got it. So that's now positioned. Come down to, let's move this around just a smidgen. We just want to make sure that we've also got exactly 90 millimeters. There we go, that's perfect. Again, a little bit of grease on that screw. 
and we're going to do, I'll just move this around a wee bit, the second hole here. So that's nice and firm in position. At this point, I'm going to pop the leg back over there. Now, I might just turn this around a little bit more. So you do have quite a lot of these larger hex nut screws and um, these are what hold the stands together. And you'll see here on the side, if I just turn this around a bit, whoops, I don't want to move my bench, I'm going to move the whole table. We've got these uh, screw, screw fixtures there. So we're just going to pop that into this slot here. And what I do, and usually this is the right height for most people, is I lift this whole leg up so as it's at its highest position, can't go any further, and then I just nip that up. I don't over tighten it, just nip it up with my drill. Now, um, I mentioned we set this at six centimeters from the back, and that basically means that the, I'll try and get this in right in line with the camera, that the front of the leg is pretty much in line with the front of the workbench. So that's kind of what you're looking for. That's, that's an ideal position, and that is perfect as it is right now. So we've put that in. Now, each of these legs also has a, uh, a flat nut system on it. So that's, believe it or not, this is a, a nut. It's got screwed on both sides and you'll see that these screws go through there. And this nut, if I bring this around, hopefully the camera will actually pick this up. Thank goodness for uh, tables on wheels, right? So these nuts go through there. Can the camera pick that up? I hope it can. And this actually sits in over the top and you'll notice it's kind of got a, a bit of a, 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 an indent on it. And you'll see that sits over there and these screws go through and then screw into that nut. And we've got a second one that goes on the other side. And we just get that started. And again, same deal. No need to over tighten anything at the moment. If we turn this back around, we'll just gently knit that up. So as it's kind of not overly tightened, but that leg's not going to move, and that's in good position. Now, we've now got to get this side in correct position, but this is where you've got to be a little bit careful because you've got to get the right distance between the two legs, and you've got to keep it all square. Now, the way I like to do this is this is where we put the back brace on. So, back brace, VM. A is, uh, is what that is. I'm not sure that's an A, but that's how they do it. Now this is the right way up, and if I was to screw this on and then turn the machine back to the right position, it would be upside down. So best way to do this is flick it upside down and you'll get it right. Now, what happens, come around the front here, is just take two of the large hex screws and just start that into the corresponding ferrule there. That's got it. And the other one, and now you don't want to tighten these up just yet, and for good reason. So we just gently nip these up a wee bit so that it's not going to fall out. And this is where we take the, um, the other side leg, but before we screw it down or do anything, grab one of the larger hex screws and put that into the position there. Extend it out all the way, because that's what I did on that one. And then just gently nip that up, so as it won't move. I can then sit this guy roughly where I need to and put two of the screws into this side. And now we'll be able to start positioning this leg perfectly. Again, I'm not going to over tighten this because I do want to have a bit of an ability to sort of move it and, and make it the right position. And this is where our spirit level comes into play. So looking at that, that's pretty well correct. Quite happy with that position there. Come across to this side. Just move my leg 
so as it's pretty much perfect as well. We want this position here to be six centimeters. That's six centimeters right there. We're pretty, pretty square there. Pretty square there. Take one of our screws again, I know, double check. Six centimeters at that point there, happy with that. Little bit of grease on the screw and pop this guy in. You could use soap on those screws too, by the way, if you wanted to. Detergent, whatever. So we've got this screw in place. Uh, what we do need to do is make sure we get this one in the correct place. And the best way to do that is measure the distance here. I've got seven, three, oh, seven, three, four. And uh, this might be different on yours, so don't take that as the measurement that you're looking for. I'm gonna get them over to here. I want seven, three, four as well. That's now pretty square. Happy with that. Just, just eyeball it a bit and make sure you, you're kind of happy because you've got to allow, sometimes you could have a little bit of movement in the, um, in the metal, could be a little bit sort of out of shape a bit. In fact, if anything, I think that's a slightly better position. I'm eyeballing that, that looks pretty good. And we now will, a little bit of grease. We now will put this screw into position. So happy with that. And we do need to put the other flat nut system on this side. So again, same deal. I'll just move this around so the camera can see it. Hopefully that's on camera. Screw that in. And this one. Now, of course, we do also sell these tables as a, um, as a, a, a completely flat bench top too. So this same video uh, can be used if you're just using one of, the, one of these tables as a bench top without a machine. So we're just going to slightly nip that up and uh, basically get a bit of a good look at this. It's looking great. And at this point, I can now tighten up these screws and all these screws. So I'm going to use, this is where your 14 mil shift uh, socket wrench comes in handy. And we are going to tighten this up quite considerably now because you don't want it coming loose. Now, it will compress this part of the flat steel. So don't panic about that, that's how it is. Nip that up. Sometimes it's easier to give it a, a full turn with your um, drill, but don't rely on the drill to be tight enough. You do need to really give them a good tighten with your socket wrench. This brace is really important for keeping the legs in position. And of course we'll do these side nuts. Now, this can be adjusted in height too. If you, if you get this all together and you think you don't like the height on the machine, uh, you can adjust the height of the bench at this point here. But make sure they're nice and firm. And of course there is one more on the, uh, on the front of that. So I'll just do this guy. Don't go crazy on it though, like, you know, I've seen people strip the threads on these things by just absolutely going way too tight. So it does need to be firm, but not crazy. All right. So there we have it. We've got the legs all assembled. Uh, whoops, keep moving that. Next thing to do is we're going to put the, um, the foot pedal bar on the bottom. So this is the bar that um, holds the foot pedal in place. And I might turn the table around for this one. Back to the front again. And the camera lady should have me in shot there. We're all good. And this is a, an adjustable bar. So again, this is a, um, something that you can set determined uh, once you determine your favorite seating position. But uh, generally speaking, I have found 
that if we set this, the edge of this bar back, I think it's 14 centimetres, I usually go, about 14, anywhere between 11 and 14 is usually right. Again, personal preference, but you won't know until you've kind of set it. And the measurement I take it to, if I move this little red um, cover off, is I usually take it to the very leading edge of this um, bracket just here. So I'm set at 14 there. And I can see the edge there behind that. I set it 14 there, I'm happy with that. And what you've got is a flat uh, steel nut and you're going to use one of the large hex screws again. Now the flat steel nut actually sits in under the channel. In, in fact, you can see it there. So it sits in like that and then it's underneath where the screw goes through on the top of the, um, the bar there. So pop that screw in there. Easiest way to do this is, if you've got long enough fingers, it's pretty simple to do it this way. And there we go. Got that in place. Let's grab the other one. Same thing, I'm just gonna tuck it in under. There I can see the screw hole from the top here. Now I'm pretty tall, so I have that advantage. Um, you might find that you, you prefer to do this on the floor. That's entirely up to you. Um, but I prefer to stand up and do this. So I'm just gonna double check my measurement. I'm on 14 centimeters, 14 centimeters. So that's that distance to the leading edge of that bracket there. And at this point, use your drill. Just give it a quick wind up there. And then I will use my socket to just tighten that up nice and firmly. There we go. Now, of course, if you don't have a socket, you could use a spanner, shifting spanner if you want to. Shifting spanners, be careful because if you're not careful, you'll just burr over the nuts and that's, you don't want to do that. Okay, so that's in position, that's in position. We'll pop this back on, back where it should be. And now we need to mount the foot pedal. And there's a couple of things you need to do on this. So let me just cut that plastic. The ruler serves as a handy knife. Get rid of that. And at this point, you'll see the foot pedal actually has a series of holes there. Now you could imagine it's going to sit, this is the front of the machine, the system, the controller for the, um, the foot pedal is going to sit back here and the pedal is going to sit basically in this position just here with these holes at the back of the machine. And those holes are for this little guy which is where we mount the, uh, the Pitman rod which is what connects to the controller. Now, in, the, uh, in your little box of tricks, you'll have two smaller hex screws, bolts, and two nuts accordingly there. And what you'll find is you've got adjustment on this, so that's again a bit of personalization, but generally speaking, I find it doesn't need too much. I usually put the the bolt through the top or the outside area piece and I put the nut underneath. So basically like that. Put the two in, just nip the, uh, get the nut on there. It's easy to do this before you put it on. Okay, got it started. And at this point, a 10 mil spanner is kind of handy. So I just basically put that spanner over that nut and get my screw, my screwdriver and kind of nip it up mostly there. And at this point, I will use my shifting spanner or if you've got a socket set, you could use that. And, at, and I just really give those a good turn. So that's nice and firm, and that's nice and firm as well. So that device has now been mounted and it will sit on the machine like that. Now you have your mounting uh, hinge plates here, and you can do these two ways. You can, basically they sit 
in like this. And there's one either side, so there's another hole just there. And they sit up and mount on this bar here. Now I can have these hinge plates exposed on the outside of the pedal, or I can put them on the inside. The inside's a little bit more fiddly to do, but nonetheless, it is doable. It's a bit neater and tidier. I generally find we want the, for most people, the pedal to be sitting kind of centered, but again, it's entirely up to you um, as to your favored uh, seating position at the machine. Well, we're going to basically mount that one there. So I know you can't see the top, but there's all slots through this bar. And we're going to get, again, one of the larger hex bolts and the appropriate socket, uh, uh, nut. And we're going to, once we work out roughly where we want it, which slots we want this in, as I've just kind of alluded to, I'm going to position this one about there. So I can see the slot that I want it to be in. So I'm going to mount this first with the, uh, the nut and the washer and the spring washer from the top. And then this is going to be sitting with the hinge on the or, or the mounting plate on the inside so the hin these uh, plates are not exposed on the actual uh, machine. Hold that into place and get that just softly tightened up there. Same thing here. Again, just put your, um, your uh, foot pedal in place. Make sure that you have collect selected the right slot in the top of the machine, which, or in the top of that um, panel. And that's where it needs to be. I'm gonna put that screw down there. And I'm going to hold this in place while I just get that nut started. And once it's started, of course, it's not gonna fall down. And once I'm kind of comfortable with where everything is positioned, I'm going to grab my drill. Let's give that a gentle little Tighten it up just ever so slightly, and now I do need to use, in fact, it might be easier to show you from the other side now, because the, hopefully that's on shot. So there we have it. We've got our pedal is mounted with the hinge plates actually hidden under the pedal, and we will need, I'm pretty sure it's our 14 mil uh, spanner, and I'm gonna use my socket on top, and I'm just going to put the spanner on top of there and nip that up now, so it's nice and firm. That's good. Same thing here. Now before you go too crazy on it, just make sure that the pedal hasn't got too much movement in it and that it's, it's quite free to move, and that's lovely. It's in perfect condition, position rather, and we just definitely Tighten that up nice and firm. So, pedal is mounted. Now we've got to put the controller box on. Okay, so now uh, we need to open the machine box because that is where the control box will be for controlling the speed of the machine. But again, if you had bought one of these tables as a um, just a bench top table that you're going to use for something else, you, you've done your job. In fact, you probably wouldn't, you certainly wouldn't have put the foot pedal on, so uh, you would be finished. But we are going to be setting it up for a machine, so we'll just cut that strapping and uh, we'll just trim that uh, tape there, get down into there, break the staples open. And in the top of the machine box, there will be another box full of accessories and things that are, are required. So there we go. And what you're looking for is this little guy here. So this is the, the control box or the, the speed regulator, if you want to call it that. And that essentially sits just here and we have a rod that connects up to this little arm on here. So I'm going to find the little pack of screws that will be 
in here. And I should actually go through this, and I, I might do that right now, just to show you what's actually in this box. We'll move that out of the way, because we'll put that on in a few moments. So you've got your controller, you've also got your little instruction book parts, parts list uh, for the machine. We have the thread stand assembly, which we will be putting together a little later on. Um, the power cord, and uh, uh, <laughs> this one's got a, a European plug on it, but we will change that over for you, you won't get that. We've got some screws, a little pack of screws for screwing this guy on. And then all the, uh, the bits and pieces we need to mount the head of the machine into the bench. There will be an oil bottle with oil for the machine. There's the, um, the presser foot lifting bar there. There's the sump for the machine. Little set of screwdrivers and the pitman rod. So the pitman rod's the other part we need for now. Uh, and I can pop all this back into place. And uh, we're good to go. So I might come around the front of the machine again. What is the back of the machine? And uh, so this, bar, this guy sits here. I generally line it pretty much up with where I've got my, my um, foot pedal because the bar will go from there down to here. But this is a very uh, flexible bar. It doesn't need to be perfect. You can actually have it off on an angle, but somewhere roughly around there. This little hole is actually to accommodate from the top of the machine uh, where we put a little stop for when we uh, rest the machine backwards um, for maintenance or whatever. So it doesn't matter if you cover that hole up. In fact, I normally do. That's about where I, I use as a reference point. And um, again, I use a little bit of grease, or as I said, you could use soap if you wanted to. And there's no absolute right or wrong where you position this. So generally speaking, a little bit of grease there. Grab my drill. I don't want to screw too close to that hole because I don't want it to crack the timber. And we'll just pop that into there. And I'm going to position that roughly about there. Again, there's no absolute right or wrong. That's in position. We've got two others to put there. And when we do this, we only need the tiniest little bit of grease. Just makes it easy to get the screw in. And we position that one. Just there. You certainly don't want this control box coming loose, so make sure you do tighten the screws up correctly. And we'll pop that one just in there. Whoops. Trying to do this so I'm allowing for the camera to see what I'm doing. So that's nice and firm and in position, finished with the grease. Now we're going to connect this rod here and for this you probably want to get your 10 mil spanner out. It's easier to, um, you just got to undo that little bit there. That's what extends it and this, again, this is fully adjustable and this is how you would adjust for the height of the, um, the height of the foot control. I might just move back a little bit. I'm creeping towards the camera. We don't want that. Um, so if I was to take that apart, take that out, you'll see on the end here, we've got a, um, a nut and a spring washer. Take that off. And a Pittman rod has a little ball, ball, uh, uh, ball and socket kind of arrangement on the end, and that allows it to sort of work on any different angle. What I like to do at this point, before I put it together, and you do this as part of your sort of maintenance on the machine too, is I like to get a bit of oil. I'm, I'm gonna just make sure I'm in camera shot there. I can push this down, it's spring loaded, and I like to get a bit of our super lube oil, which is quite a, a high viscosity oil, and, um, and get that in there and make sure that there's some oil in that ball. And then that guy goes on here like so, and then we take our spring washer and put that on like that, and then this nut and we tighten that up. Now you will need your 10 mil spanner and you, you probably a shifter or a second 10 mil spanner if you've got it. And what I do is I just put my shifter on this side to hold that, that nut in place. Oops, we'll get that back on there properly. And then I basically tighten up 
on this side with the open end part of my spanner and make sure that's nice and firm, which it now is. And so that's part one of the Pitman rod in place. Same thing applies down the bottom here. So you'll see on this controller, I'll come around this side for a moment. You've got two holes here. I generally put this on the outside or the furthest hole. That gives me a little bit more travel on my foot control, which I kind of like. So we're going to take the nut. Again, just there with that ball, I'm just going to pop some oil in there. Just make sure a good dollop of oil in there. That gets it nice and free and smooth. And at this point, I'm going to pop this on here like so. Spring washer. There we go. Again, just tighten this nut up using your open end spanner. Make sure it's nice and firm. That's good. Good idea to also to check that these this nut here is quite tight. It will be. I, I don't think I've ever opened up one where that's been loose, but that's fine. And then what we do is this little adjustment or this little clamp is what secures the two rods together. Now you don't need to set this at the moment because quite honestly you'll probably change it. But generally speaking you're going to want your pedal to be somewhere on a slight angle. But again, wait till you're seated, uh, seating at the machine and then you set that to your own position. But it is a good idea to tighten it up and keep it firmly in position for now. So. So that's now attached. The only other thing we've got to do on the bench is attach the drawer and put the legs on. So let me just bring this back around here a bit. We'll put the, the feet on first, not the legs. The legs are already there. So the feet, uh, I've got little uh, sort of adjustable rubbers on there. What I like to do is just generally screw the, the locking nut all the way down and then just start these guys in. Make sure it's not going to catch on that bit of red plastic there. Again, do the same thing on this guy here. And if you're on an uneven surface, these are adjustable so you can level up the, um, the machine by adjusting these feet. It's a pretty robust stand actually. I got a lot of customers with, uh, with larger domestic machines and they actually buy these stands to, um, to put their big, you know, like luminaires and big machines on because they're kind of really sturdy. And then just grab your 19 mil spanner and just nip, nip that locking nut up a little bit. You don't need to go crazy on that. Just so feet are in position. And now what we need to do is get the drawer in place. So you're going to have two slides or runners for the drawer and they should have a few little tiny Phillips head, uh, Phillips head, um, countersunk wood screws in there, which they do. Now remember, this is going to open to the front of the machine. So if I bring this around a little bit this way, this is the front of the machine and my drawer, I really will want it to sit with the handle just in from the edge and just in from the front leading edge as well. So I kind of just position it where I want it. Take the uh, the runner with the, the slide that sits over this edge, move that in a bit. I don't want to go too close to the edge with the screws because I don't want them to, to potentially crack any timber or anything. And just once I've got it in position, I'm happy with that, grab your drill and little tip here, loosen the, if you've got a drill with a clutch on it, loosen the clutch right down. You don't want to go crazy and drill straight through the plastic of the runner. I generally start with my center screw first. That's my starting point. Okay, level it up, make sure it's square with the edge there. Come down, get this guy into place. Nice. And you, you really don't need any lubrication on the screw on these. So there's our first slide, I'm 
move it around a bit so you can see what we're doing here. And then take the second slide, position it where you need it. It's pretty self-explanatory. Again, I like to do the centre one first. And... One more to go. Our drawer's in place, nice and easy. Okay, so I've cleaned away all my tools. We've basically got everything done. We've got the stand up, we've got the, um, the bracing on, we've got the foot pedal, foot pedal mounted, we've got the drawer on, and we've got the control panel in place and the Pitman rod. At this point, um, we're ready to go to the next step, and that's turn the machine over and put the, um, the machine head in place and finish the thread stand. But it, this is where you, you kind of do need a second person to help you. Um, so uh, I will grab someone to give me a hand and we'll turn the machine over. Okay, so I've enlisted some help. Haley's going to help me turn this machine over. They're not terribly heavy, just a bit awkward. So we're just going to lift it up and then just gently turn it over like so and put that down on the ground. There we go. But what I will do before you run, Hales, is we might just turn this machine around so the front is facing the camera. There we go. Perfect. Look at that. Thank you, Haley. All done. So don't try and do it yourself, guys. Okay, so here we have it now. We've got to put the, um, the, the bits for the machine on top. So let's have another look at what was in that box. So we have the, uh, the thread stand, which we will use a little later. We've got our oil bottle, which we don't need just yet. We've got our presser, uh, knee lift presser bar there. Uh, but this is the bit we need right now is we've got this um, little package of goodies there and we've also got the sump. Now this particular model is um, an open sump machine which means it has an oil sump and you might have a machine that has a closed sump in which case you wouldn't have this. Uh, and basically it sits in this cavity and within this cavity we will need to put the the hinge rubbers. So we've got the two lots of hinge rubbers there and these guys basically sit in here like so. And then we've got the rubbers that hold the, I may as well get these out as well, they're the hinges for the machine. And this little guy here is the bracket for holding the presser foot knee lever in place. We don't need that just yet. There will be some little uh, possibly will be. All models are different, you just never know what's going to be in there sometimes, but there's some little like um, nails or clouts or whatever they are, and um, we use them, can use them, uh, certainly to, to hold these hinges in place, although I prefer to put a couple of little self-tapping screwed or, um, or countersunk screws in there, wood screws. We'll get to that in a minute, but before we do, Let's have a look at the sump. Now the sump sits in this way. This is where you access your bobbin case area and uh, the oil sits in this side. It will automatically have like a gasket in here, um, a high low mark on there so you can know how much oil you have. But you do have these little um, mounting rubbers. Obviously these guys will go down in, in this system here, in these uh, front areas here and these guys sit in the back. Now, you do need to mount these to the sump before you put them in. So this one just, you can see a slot on there goes over that area there. And this one goes on there like so. That one goes there, and this one goes just there. And all you need to do now is just gently lower that into place, push all that into position, and now your sump is mounted. It's, just, it's that easy. Um, let's have a look at these hinges, um, and, in, and as you can see, the, the hinge rubbers here, these hinges go into the back of the machine and they then sit in there like that. Now what I like to do is secure these firmly. So I'm going to show you how to put a couple of um, countersunk wood screws in there, but you could equally just get a little hammer and a punch and punch a couple of nails through there. I don't like that, to be honest. So let me get some screws and we'll see how that works. 
Right, so um, I've got the screws here. These are a five gauge, 16 mil um, uh, countersunk timber screw, a dime a dozen everywhere, or a similar size screw, it doesn't really matter. You don't absolutely positively have to do this. I just think it works better. So essentially what I do is I just make sure that that hinge rubber is positioned nice and firmly back in, the, in its um, housing there. And I put two in, so I go straight down in the hinge just until the screw is countersunk into the rubber and um, it just makes for a better experience I think. So there we go, another one there. Now don't go crazy because you'll go straight through the rubber if, you, if you're not careful and we don't want to do that. So again we'll just go this side. Have one more out there. So there are five gauge 16 mil countersunk wood screw, um, which I find is the best size. There you go, nicely positioned now. So that's done. And a um, couple of other bits in here, you'll see. This is the little stop, the machine rest stop. So when you tip the machine back, it stops the machine from going too far. That just sits in there. And this is the little umbrella that sits over this hole here. And what that does is that is a part of the presser foot lifting mechanism. So when we move the, the knee lever, that pushes up and pushes the, and opens the presser foot up. So we can pop all this back. Now, of course, in that pack, there's also some spare needles. And uh, we'll get back to that. The next thing is we do have to put the machine into position. So again, you will need someone to assist you to lift the machine and you make sure it's someone who's quite capable uh, of lifting a heavy weight and, and it's awkward too and, and getting grip on it um, can also be challenging. So just pay particular attention to who you get to help with that and, and the way you do it. So I'm gonna go grab someone to give me a hand and uh, we'll get the machine mounted. Okay, so I have someone coming to give me a hand in just a moment, but first things first, um, we'll take this uh, accessory box out. We don't need that in there. Uh, you'll notice I have the machine sitting on the floor. In the machine will be a foam piece. So we're gonna take that out. And I find the best way to do this is get someone to assist you to lift the machine out of the box, put it on the floor, and then we put the two hinges in place, and then we lift it and put it in the machine. So Dan's here to help me. So he's gonna come in and give me a hand to, um, to lift the machine out. Again, they're heavy and they're a little bit awkward and you've got to get a good grip on them. So uh, we're gonna do that first. Don't, of course, normal lifting rules apply, guys. Make sure you lift with your knees, don't use your back. So here we go, machine out, put it on the ground. And this is one of the lighter ones. So if you've got a different model, it might be a little heavier. So we'll take that plastic off. And there are a couple of holes on the back of the machine. Um, you, uh, we might get this on video, I think. I'll just, we'll just turn it around and show you. So, I don't know if the camera's got that. These hinges go into these two holes like so. And sit there like that. And those hinges then sit into the hinge rubbers here. So once we've got those hinges in place, we have turned the machine around, so we need to turn it back the other way. But um, yeah, I'll go this way. And then we just lower the machine down. And that's it. It's all in. So two people lift though, definitely. Thanks, Dan. All good? No so that's our machine mounted. And um, next thing we're going to do is install the thread stand. So now we have the thread stand to assemble, which is, uh, again, pretty simple process. I'll get my scissors there to cut that. And uh, it's a twin spool thread stand, which is cool. Take that out, you've got your thread plates there and a couple of bars and these guys. So what you'll do is uh, this component here, which has the large nut on it, and a rubber washer there, and two steel washers. 
one steel washer stays on there. And I'm hoping camera can pick up that little th uh, hole there. Yep, that's good. So one washer stays there like so and goes down. Now, contentious issue for me. I, I'd usually put it with the, the plastic washer up against, hard up against the, um, the bottom of the stand. I've seen other people put it with the washer uh, hard up against the nut, and then once they tighten the nut up, it just completely screws up the washer and it's not using, the rubber washer's not doing anything. So that's how I do it. Rubber washer up, and then get that nut on. Now, I did, I did forget to mention that you do need quite a large spanner or larger shifting spanner to get this one on properly. And, and I didn't mention that at the start, so my apologies for that, but I do have an eight inch shifter which works pretty good for this. So you need to tighten that up nice and firm. And uh, again, if I was to swing that tightly with the rubber washer on the bottom, it would just splay that washer out and destroy it. So now that that's in position, you will see that there's a little joiner for in, the, in the little kit there. So this little joiner joins the two pieces like so. Now I generally put my, my two arms, so we've got the, uh, the arm that actually supports the, the um, spool holders and then the arm that has the spool uh, eyelets in it or the thread eyelets. So what I, what I tend to do is basically tighten this one up first. Again, it's got a, um, you can use your drill, but you will need an eight mil spanner. Even though these have got kind of a, a self-locking thing on the nuts, sometimes they work fine, sometimes they don't. So we're just gonna tighten this up a little bit. And uh, I find you're far better off now using your eight mil spanner and tightening these guys up, or if you have a socket set, even better. So these need to be pretty firm. And there we go, that's not going anywhere, nice and good. Take that little rubber grommet off the top and we do want to put the, the uh, spool holder bar on first. And what you'll notice is in, in this kit, you've got um, two spool plates, some felt pads, and two uh, spool pins with a series of washers. So a flat washer and a spring washer. So we need to undo that. And in fact, I'll put this on first because you can put them on before you put this on or after, it's up to you. Um, might be easier to do it this way. So this guy goes down and just sits basically right there. Again, I'm going to use my, my drill driver to nip that up. That's pretty good. That's pretty firm. I don't need to worry about changing anything there. And at this point, we take the, um, the spool pin, goes through the top of the plastic. There is kind of a little, there's a little, um, angles on it that actually do position themselves in that plastic driver to keep every in that plate to keep it all firm. Pop that in and then take your washer with the, or the flat washer followed by the spring washer and then the nut and pop that onto there. And again, that'll be the eight mil spanner to tighten that up. Don't need to go crazy on this. Just make sure it's not gonna vibrate loose or anything. So that one's in place. And the little felt pad goes over there. Nice and neat. Second one. Again, through there, whoops. Again, flat washer, spring washer, then the nut. Eight mil spanner. And almost done. 
So that's all good. Felt pad and then the little thread umbrellas, or the spool umbrellas that go on here. And these of course are designed to keep your larger spools sitting still and not vibrating around everywhere. And that also holds the felt in place. And then it's just a matter of popping the, the eyelet arm above here. Again, we'll just nip that up with the drill. Last thing to do is pop the little grommet on the top and that sits there and there is our thread stand all assembled. We've got the machine in place. So one of the last things we need to do is to attach the presser foot uh, knee lever and um, we will need the 10 and the 14 mil spanners for this job and you'll also need this little uh, mounting block that uh, came in the kit with the machine. So hopefully our camera will actually pick this up but you'll see underneath the machine you've got this little bar here that is part of the, um, the, the sump system and essentially what happens is this knee lever sits here like this and as we rotate that it lifts the presser foot. So first thing we need to do is, um, is pop this little mounting block on and look there's, there's multiple ways you can do this uh, and multiple adjustments on the knee lever. It's, you really can't set it correctly until you're sitting at the machine yourself but essentially that just pops over there and just, just to get it all mounted I'm just simply going to nip up this screw here so it's nice and firm and that's a bit of a starting point for me. Um, the knee lever itself has got multiple adjustments so if you undo that screw there you know we can set this at any angle, we can change the height of, of the um, pad itself but again we'll do that, you, you do that when you're kind of seated at your machine so I'm just going to nip it up there for now and I'm going to pop my, my uh, lever in at that point. So you can see I can, I can raise it, I can lower and change angles uh, but right now I'm just going to nip it up here and we'll just really give it a good, bit of a good turn and right now if I try to lift the foot you can see by pushing that over the foot is lifting um, and again this is what I said when you're uh, with your foot pedal for instance you might find that you, you prefer to have the pedal further over to the left it's entirely up to you it's all adjustable uh, but do take some time to work that out but now that that is going to lift the foot now I do need to show you there's an adjustment under here for setting the amount of lift on the foot and the resting position of this pedal so um, we'll just get need to get the camera under here to have a good look at that. So there's a couple of adjusting screws under here let's look at this one first and this guy actually determines how much lift you might have on the foot. So when I push this up, you can see this bar is pushing on that little black umbrella. That is the umbrella that sat in the sump. And as I push that, that lifts the foot. But if I was to screw this screw all the way up, I would have potentially less lift or more lift. Um, so that is, you just need to basically set that screw that you've got enough lifting height Again, if I was to screw it up further before I lock it in, I've actually got less lift on the foot. If I screw it down, like I'm doing now, it allows me to move this further and I can lift the foot higher. So where I have it at the moment is pretty good and I'm just going to turn that locking nut up and using my 10 mil spanner, I'm just going to lock that nut into place so that's not going to come loose. The other setting is on this side and that determines how much movement I've got on the knee lever before it starts to engage. If I had that screwed all the way down for instance, which I'm screwing down now, I've got a lot more movement there before I even start to engage the foot and I don't want that, I, I want to have less than that so I'm going to screw that up and it's a bit easier probably with a screwdriver. But now I've only got a little bit of movement there which I'm really quite happy with and now I'm going to nip that screw up. But you do need to tighten these up in the right position because if you don't they'll just work loose and fall, fall out and you'll be looking for the nuts on the ground. So right now that's lifting quite well. Um, our camera might come up, we'll show you that presser foot lifting as I'm doing this. Now as I move down you want this at a comfortable angle for your foot 
and of course on these they have a heel back position, that's what determines the trim function. So once you get that angle right, you just adjust this screw here, or, or when you want to get it right, undo this screw, lengthen or shorten that rod until it suits your, the angle of your foot, how you like to sew. But um, that's the only other adjustment you need to worry about. So that's that part done, I think we're almost done. So we're almost done and perhaps the second last thing you're going to do is we've got to plug in the control box into the back of the machine and we've also got to connect the power. Now, control box, um, I haven't uh, neatened up the lead under there yet but you can cable tie the lead um, out of the way or you can even put little um, cable, uh, cable clamps up into the timber, it's up to you. Um, but there's no exposed belts on these machines, the motor is all built into the machine so nothing's going to get damaged or caught. So right now we're going to look at the control box cable and it just comes up through this hole here and it plugs into this little receptor here. And so we just simply plug, plug that in, that's now done. And then you've got your power cable, which is just a case of plugging into this guy here. And there, it only goes one way and you'll see that. So we just simply put that in there and do that guy up. And that is now done. You've got your power connected. You've got your uh, control box connected. All that's left to do now is to put the oil in the machine. Okay, so oiling, putting oil in the machine is very, very simple. You will have a, um, a bottle of oil to use in the kit. Uh, now, I am going to make one very important warning here. You, you will be tilting the machine back and I'm, I'm urging you to be careful when you do this. Uh, you might recall we had a little stop in the back of the bench that actually holds the machine when you set it back. But in order to lift the machine back, it is just a case of uh, one arm here and gently tip that back like so and just leave it sitting there. This is your sump mechanism here and the oil simply pours into that. I don't need to pour the oil in here just at the moment, but when you pour the oil in here before you do, Make, there's a little sump screw down in here, just make sure that's tight. Uh, it is always tight, I haven't had one that hasn't been. Uh, but there's a gasket on that, prevents any oil leaking out. And uh, there's the, the pump there, but we are going to have another video on this which shows you how to use the machine, so I'll go into all that in that usage video. But my, my warning to you now is when you lift this machine and you put the oil in there, be very, very careful when you're putting the machine back. These are heavy. If you happen to get your hand caught here as you're putting the machine down you will very seriously damage your fingers and um, uh, being a sewing machine mechanic for 40 odd years in the clothing industry uh, I've seen it happen so please be careful. When you put the machine back just keep your hands away and then just gently lower it back down and that's it that's all there is to it. So um, there uh, with that oiling system and I should have just pointed out there is a high and low mark there the oil, as long as it's between that low and high mark, uh, it's fine. You've got enough oil. But again, the instructional video on the machine will explain what to look for to make sure your machine is pumping correctly. But all in all, guys, that's it. That's how you assemble um, the bench, the stand, insert the machine for the VA2S VMA machine from Echidna. It would, uh, again, it's going to be the same for pretty much all the standard straight stitch type models. Very, very similar, and I'm sure this video would help you in regardless of what brand or, or you, what model you're looking at. So um, I hope you found that helpful, and uh, until next time, happy sewing. Cheers. Mm -hmm.